you then transfer to St. Bonaventure University, mm -hmm. um, close to your hometown. Yep. Does prox proximity play a factor in your choice yeah. to transfer to St. Bonnie's? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to be, um, I wanted my mom to see me. You know, like she didn't really get to see me a lot and, um, you know, I wanted her to get to see me play. Okay. Okay. Amen to that. Amen to moms, of course. Um, any other reasons, any other factors as to why you chose to transfer back to close to home, St. Bonnie? I mean, my visit, man, I met my, those dudes that are still my best friends, Greg Lewis and Maude Smith, and it was like, like, it was like we were the same people. So I was like, I can, and, and we were about to be under probation at the time too. Um, so I knew we weren't going to be good, but you know, at that time, again, you, you, you're almost cocky. You think like, oh, I'll, I'll change this. Yeah. Um, but they were my, like, I, I immediately click with them. They were my, they were my homeboys. And um, I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't change it for the world. Gotcha. Now, how is that red shirt year for you? Because back then, I don't know any young fellas that may watch this interview. <laughs> Uh, they may not know you had to sit mandatory. It yep. didn't matter what the hell was going on. You were sitting when you transferred. Yep. And you're sitting and your former college makes an Elite Eight run while you're sitting at your new school redshirting. Right. Does that sting at all while you're redshirting? Um, what, you, what were your thoughts watching these guys go on this Elite Eight run? So when I left b office the year before, um, he said, we're going to make that NCAA tournament and we're going to go. We're going to go deep. And I'm like, looking at him. Because like, we played in the NIT that year. We lost to, um, remember Ricky Shields? Played at Rutgers? Absolutely. So we lost to Rutgers in the Elite Eight, right, in the NIT. Um, and um, so we were we were trending, right? And and he said that to me and I was like, yeah, man, whatever, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not going to change. So I so I remember sitting there, but they beat uh, Wake Forest. Chris Paul, Chris Paul, Eric, yeah. Chris Paul and Eric Williams. Yeah, and I was like, yo, I, I never. I had the Henny bottle. <laughs> Go ahead, tell us about it, Ty. Like, with my with my boys, and shoot, that's taking it to the face. That's that's about what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh man, it might even it might even been Incredible Hulk that night. <laughs> Oh, man. So you got a little hypnotic to go with it, huh? boy. You know, so no, it was man, it was super tough, man, and um. And I didn't use my red shirt year well, you know. Again, like got in, got in some off the court trouble. Got in off some the court rash, trouble. Drink, drink and drive. And yeah, like it was. It was. I was. I was spiraling that way fast. Um, and what do you think caused that? Like, what do you think made you? Say, I think. I think freedom. I or? think stress. Um, you know, I think f like falling in love with things outside of like basketball like really losing your like we talked about it like almost like it's not hopelessness like as far as I came from it wasn't hopelessness but it was like you get lost bro like you you go this way right and how you don't know how to get back um and I like I fell in love with bad shit like really bad shit absolutely um happens we see it happen a lot yeah. man and you can go from being that dude yep. six months later. Being. We don't even notice you. Right. Because you may be living a totally different lifestyle. Right. Now all of a sudden. And it happens a lot with a lot of kids, especially kids who do come out of high school as those dudes. And right. they feel as if their college situation wasn't. Right. Um, what they thought it would be coming yeah. out. You know, my, my coaches were just like, at the time, like, I knew basketball. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I kind of knew. I was like, oh man, like this ain't good, and they didn't really like me. They didn't. We didn't really like. I, the whole team really didn't like them, but they really didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was tough, man. It was tough, like, cause I I felt like they didn't understand where I was coming from, um, you know, and and again, like, you're selfish. You're you're a kid. I guess at that time I was nineteen twenty, so I wasn't that young anymore. But. Um, yeah, man, and, and then I didn't, I stopped working, you know? Right. I didn't really, like, I got lost. And then Coach Schmidt came, 
sat me in his office and was like, yo, I read about you, I heard about you, but you got a clean slate with me. And that was it. And I, boom. And that really helped you. I turned. 